The United States once poisoned more than 5 billion of these tiny creatures, then 200 years later rushed to bring them back to stop the land from turning into desert. Sounds absurd, but it's completely true. The prairie may be one of the most devastated ecosystems in North America. Dead soil, drained water, hopeless people. Billions of dollars have been poured into concrete dams and biotechnology, yet nothing has been able to revive this land. So what made these little creatures succeed were both humans and modern machines failed. And how did a former base holding 2,613 tons of mustard gas become a cradle of life? The answer lies in the story we're about to explore. The North American prairie was once one of the greatest ecosystems on Earth, covering more than 1.5 million square miles, nearly the size of the entire European Union. From Canada down to Texas, Around the year 1800, it was an endless sea of green grass, home to bison golden eagles, burrowing owls prairie foxes, and nearly 5 billion living creatures sharing one fertile land. But now, less than 5% of that original area remains. Yes, it's almost all gone. The other 95% has been plowed under, covered in concrete, or simply turned into desert. In Chihuahua, Mexico, what used to be lush grassland, is now overrun by mesquite shrubs. It might look harmless, but their roots can reach more than 100 feet deep, draining every drop of groundwater and leaving the soil as hard as concrete. The ground cracks microorganisms vanish, and the runoff washes away the last layer of fertile topsoil. Grass stops growing the bison leave followed by the golden eagles burrowing owls, and black-footed ferrets all disappearing one after another. And you know what? In just a few decades, the lands that once sustained thousands of species have turned into semi-deserts. Can you guess what turned the prairie into a desert? Yes, it all began with a human weed-clearing campaign. In the 19th century, when European settlers moved west, they saw countless small holes scattered across the land and believed they were disease nests, or traps that break horses' legs and cattle's ankles. And just like that, the prairie dog, a creature no bigger than a human hand, became the number one enemy of American farmers. The government didn't just stay silent, it offered bounties. Destroy a burrow, earn a few cents. In some places, families brought their children along carrying shovels and poison pouring gasoline into the ground and setting it on fire. Several states even held Prairie Dog Day, a large-scale extermination festival. Newspapers proudly proclaimed the curse of the rancher is finally gone. In South Dakota alone, during the 1980s, more than 494,000 acres, an area roughly the size of Los Angeles, were poisoned just to wipe out this species. By the year 2098% of the prairie had been erased leaving only scattered fragments behind. People believe they were saving crops, protecting livestock. But you know what the worst part is? Every reason humans gave for killing them was wrong. Research by the United States Fish and Wildlife Service showed that over decades, there was no clear evidence that horses or cattle broke their legs by stepping into prairie dog holes. The rate was less than 0.005% of all farm accident reports. And that plague they were blamed for. In truth, prairie dogs were victims too infected by fleas, carrying bacteria brought from Asian rats. Doesn't that sound unfair? A species hunted down for crimes it never committed. And now think about this. For two centuries, humans poisoned millions of prairie dogs only to realize they never harmed anyone at all. On the contrary, they turned out to be far more useful than anyone imagined. Let's learn a bit about them. They're called prairie dogs, but they're not dogs at all. The name comes from the distinctive barking sound they make to warn others of danger. Yes, prairie dogs have their own language. Biologists at Northern Arizona University discovered that when danger approaches, prairie dogs don't just bark randomly, their calls actually have grammar and structure. A warning for hawk sounds completely different from one for coyote, and even changes depending on whether the threat is a person wearing yellow or a person wearing blue. 
Can you imagine that a creature barely longer than your hand can describe color shape movement and even the size of its enemy, something even many primates can't do? Scientists call this the most sophisticated communication system ever recorded among rodents. And when that was finally understood, people were stunned for centuries. Humans had wiped out what could be called nature's linguists. These tiny creatures, smaller than a human hand, are actually silent ecological engineers who have been tirelessly working for millions of years to keep the land alive. A single prairie dog colony of about 25 individuals can dig nearly 1,300 feet of tunnels each year, turning and loosening more than 22,000 pounds of soil about the same workload as a small farming machine. Those twisting tunnels aren't meaningless. They circulate air-release trapped carbon dioxide and pull minerals from deep underground to the surface, restoring lost nutrients. You know what's most fascinating soil in areas with prairie dogs can hold three times more water than in areas without them. Even during droughts, the grass stays green and dust storms the prairie's greatest enemy almost disappear. And here's the best part. More than 150 other species depend on them. Burrowing owls nest in abandoned tunnels, foxes, and ferrets hunt around the burrow entrances and bison graze on the fresh, soft grass that grows from the loosened soil they create. After more than a century of destruction, humans finally began to realize their massive mistake. In 2008, Arizona launched a bold experiment to restore the soul of the prairie, the Gunnison's Prairie Dog. The project became a symbol of cooperation with nature. Agencies like the Arizona Game and Fish Department, the Bureau of Land Management and private landowners joined forces to release 78 prairie dogs from New Mexico back into the lands that were once their home. At first, everyone doubted whether a few dozen small rodents could make any difference in a land cracked and lifeless. But just a few years later, the results amazed ecologists. Their population grew to over 300 individuals covering 36 acres, and they continued to thrive. By the mid-2010s, their range had expanded even further, and that's when the miracle began. The first patches of green grass sprouted again after decades of barrenness. As the grass returned, the bison came back. When the prairie dogs reappeared, the burrowing owls, swift foxes, and golden eagles followed. Researchers described the phenomenon as a reverse domino effect, a biological chain reaction spreading from the soil all the way up to the sky. If people in Arizona took cautious first steps in Chihuahua, Mexico, they witnessed a true miracle. This land was once a vast prairie, lush green and alive with the footsteps of bison. But by the late 1980s, everything had turned to dust and thorns. After decades of hunting, poisoning and plowing for agriculture, prairie dogs were nearly extinct. And that's when the mesquite tree, a shrub with roots, reaching over 100 feet deep, took over. It drained the groundwater, killed the grass, and transformed the prairie into a sea of thorny dryness where no herd could survive for long. Then, in 1987, a group of farmers and ecologists decided to try something no one had ever imagined releasing a few hundred prairie dogs back into the wild. It sounded simple, but the results were like a natural experiment written by the earth itself. Within a single year, the mesquite began to vanish, not because of chemicals or machines, but because prairie dogs couldn't stand having their view blocked. They dug, chewed, pushed, and broke down the shrub's roots to keep the horizon open purely by instinct. As the mesquite fell, water returned to the soil, and young grass sprouted from seeds that had been buried for decades. Everything came back. Locals called this phenomenon the Prairie Resurrection. After witnessing the miracles in Arizona and Mexico, ecologists still wanted definitive proof could prairie dogs truly restore an entire ecosystem? Or was it just coincidence? The answer was found at the Sevilleta National Wildlife Refuge in New Mexico. Here, researchers selected two plots of land identical in every way. Same grass cover, same rainfall, same elevation. 
One 22-acre plot was reintroduced with prairie dogs, the other was left untouched as a control. The results came faster than anyone expected. Within weeks, burrowing owls appeared near the new tunnels, jackrabbits returned and birds of prey circled overhead. Meanwhile, the control plot remained silent and barren, like dead land. Underground sensors recorded soil moisture increasing by nearly 40%, and the number of insects tripled compared to the control area. A single small prairie dog colony had reignited an entire food chain that had been silent for decades. If the experiment in Sevilleta proved that a single prairie dog colony could wake up nature, then what happened in Colorado was even more extraordinary because it took place right in a region once seen as a scar of war. About 500 miles north of Chihuahua lies the Pueblo Chemical Depot, a site that once stored 2,613 tons of mustard gas, a chemical weapon capable of killing millions of living creatures in just minutes. For decades, it was a forbidden zone, no birds, no grass, only rusting steel warehouses and blinding yellow warning signs. But after all the weapons were neutralized, ecologists saw a rare opportunity to turn a place that once destroyed life into one that could bring it back. From 2019 to 2023, an alliance including the United States Army, the Colorado Parks, and Wildlife Department, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Transportation, and the Prairie Dog Coalition launched a Prairie Dog Reintroduction Project. Hundreds of prairie dogs were relocated group by group, each handled with care as if planting seeds of hope. The ultimate goal was to rebuild an ecosystem stable enough to reintroduce the black-footed ferret, a predator entirely dependent on prairie dogs for survival. Of course, nature is never easy. Between 2015 and 2016, a plague outbreak swept through the region, wiping out most of the population. But by 2023, they had come back stronger, larger, and most importantly, bringing with them the entire food chain that had once vanished. With the prairie dogs returned, burrowing owls, hawks, and swift foxes followed. Looking back on this journey, it's hard to believe everything began with one small rodent. A creature once labeled a pest has now become a symbol of rebirth. In China, the Kabuki Desert has come back to life thanks to millions of wild rabbits restoring the soil and bringing back the grass. In Washington, beavers are being reintroduced to retain water turning arid lands into thriving wetlands. And in Arizona, prairie dogs themselves have revived an ecosystem once thought dead. When humans stop playing conqueror and let nature heal itself, the land, the water, and we are all saved. If one tiny species can bring an entire prairie back to life, just imagine how many other creatures we've overlooked might be holding the key to saving our planet. And if you believe stories like this deserve to be shared, hit that subscribe button and join us as we uncover more miracles that nature continues to create quietly even after humanity's mistakes.